Hello class, this is going over the practice test for our second major quiz. So number one, always read the problem carefully. Walter is biking to school. Since he is almost there, he decelerates at a rate of 0.9 meters per second. After 10 seconds, Walter's speed is 5 meters per second. What, is his, what was his original velocity? Alright, so let's draw a picture. I'm going to draw a terrible bike. So this bike, with Walter on it of course, is going forward, but he's slowing down, right? He's getting slower. So his final, so after 10 seconds have passed, so 10 seconds have gone by, he is now going 5 meters per second, alright? And this whole time he was decelerating, remember, decelerate means, you know, in your car you decelerate, you are slowing down. So that would mean this is a negative 0.9 meters per second squared that we're talking about because he's slowing down. He's not speeding up. Because remember this is our positive negative direction. He's slowing down. That means he must be technically accelerating in the negative direction. Alright, so let's write our variables. We already went over the acceleration. is a negative 0.9 meters per second because it's decelerating. Our velocity at the end, our final velocity is 5 meters per second. Our time is 10 seconds. And if you look back at the question asked, what's the original velocity? So you can think of original velocity as our initial. What did it start at over here? So you plug that in. Alright, and we're not sure what that is. So hopefully looking at these, you know, oh wait. I should definitely be using my third equation, where final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. All we got to do now is plug in some numbers. We have it equals 5 meters plus, remember that's a negative 0.9 for our acceleration, and our time is 10 seconds. 0 0.9 times 10. Think of it as 9 times 10 gives you 90, and then you put your point back in, and it is still negative. We have our velo original velocity, and it, our final velocity is 5. So we want to separate and get v naught all alone. So we have to get rid of this term. So it is currently subtracted, so to get rid of it, you must add it to both sides. Remember, one thing. Whatever you do to one side, you must do the other. So you get V naught equals 5 plus 9, which gives you 14 meters per second. As far as making sure your variables check out, this is a meters per second squared. You're multiplying it times time, which is a second. You can cross out one of these seconds, cross out your other seconds. You have meters per second. This was originally in meters per second, so we're all in just meters per second like we want. So your final answer should be 14 meters per second. Moving on. Number two. Zaire drops some headphones out of the window at 80, of an 85-story building that is 348 meters tall. After four seconds, how far above the ground is are the headphones? So I kind of put this in as a like little trick. 85 stories, we don't ever use that unit. Really what we care about is that this is how tall it is. Alright, so let's draw our building. We got Xi on top of it. And he drops his headphones. Boop. Alright, so he drops his headphones. He is originally, let's call our ground zero. So that means he's way up high at 348. So recap, three, 348 meters goes down to zero. We are trying to figure out how far does it fall in four seconds. And then we know since it's falling we do know some extra things about this problem but let's start writing out our variables. Alright, so we know where it started. It started at this huge height of 348 meters. Essentially three football, over three football fields high. Alright, we want to figure out how far it went. 
So we don't know that. We do know the time is 4 seconds. And since it's falling, we do know the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Did Miss Chicoy forget something? Indeed she did. It's falling. Remember, falling is in our negative direction. Up is our positive, so it must be a negative 10 meters per second squared. But we are missing one small thing. We don't know what his initial velocity is, or the problem doesn't explicitly say it. But let's think. If he drops something, is he throwing it down? Is he throwing it up? Is he throwing it any which way? No. So his initial velocity will just be zero, because he dropped it. It was starting from rest in his hand. Alright, now that we have all of these variables, what equation should we plug them into? Hopefully you can look at your list of equations and say, aha, this would be the best equation, because I have x, I have x naught, I have t, I have a, and I have v naught, which means your best equation to use would be the first e kinematics equation. So you want to plug in all your numbers. You do not know x. You do know 348 meters. This whole term, v naught is 0, so 0 times t is still 0, so we can cross it out. And then we have 1 half times our acceleration. Remember, keep it negative. Negative 10 times our t, which is 4 seconds. And then you must square it. So we now have 348 meters plus 1 half times negative 10 times 16, or times 4 squared. So you can multiply this any way you want. Leave this for now. You're going to have 16, I like to square them first, neg times negative 10 times 1 half. If you have 16 times negative 10, that gives you negative 160 times one half. That's 348. It's still hanging on over here. One half of 160 is negative 80. So I'm going to move my problem over here. 348 minus one half times negative 160 gives us 180. And then, you know, subtract it. So you have 348 minus 80 gives you 268 meters. This is your final answer. So basically, you figured out that, oh, it dropped 80 meters, which means it is now at the 268 meter mark on your building. Alright, hopefully this helped you. We're moving on to three. Alright, let's read through three. A pirate A is trying to make a treasure make it to a treasure chest before pirate B. Pirate A starts out at a distance of 100 meters from the chest and runs at a constant speed of 4 meters per second. Pirate B starts out at a distance of 80 meters from the chest. However, starting from rest, she pirate B rest accelerates at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. Which pirate makes it to the treasure first? Justify. Alright, so we care who gets there first. So let's draw it. Let's say we have a sum chest. Some chest that both pirates are trying to get to. Pirate A must go 100 meters to get there. Pirate B must only has to go 80 meters to get there. That was a terrible written 80. 80 meters to get there. Alright, so remember, we got two objects. That means you absolutely must have two problems. So we're going to have A and B information. So, as far as A, we know in the end, she must have gone a hundred meters, which means in the beginning we can our, we can just say okay, she started at zero. All right. Also, we see she has a speed. Her speed is four 
meters per second. But let's think about this. She runs at a constant speed. So she started at that speed. So this is her initial velocity. Alright, as far as her acceleration, it doesn't say an acceleration, but it does give us this clue. It says she goes at constant speed. That means her speed doesn't change. If you are not changing speed, are you accelerating? If you are hit, you hit cruise control, you're going, you're cruising, are you hitting your accelerator? No. So a constant speed means you're not accelerating. That means your acceleration is therefore zero. Alright, and do we know the time? Not really, because what's it asking? Which part makes it to the treasure chest first? If we're measuring how fast someone gets somewhere, we're taking the time it takes them to get there. So time is our big question mark. Alright, so B, same idea, X, Pirate B must go 80 meters. And therefore, we can say Pirate X starts at zero. Our Pirate X initial velocity, it says, aha, starting from rest. I kind of crossed it out, but starting from rest. That means Pirate B started out going nowhere, or zero meters per second. It does mention, though, that she accelerates at a rate of 2.0 meters per second squared. And we do not know her time, again, because we're trying to figure out how long it takes them to get there. So those are your two problems. Hopefully you can look at these and say, oh wait, the equation I definitely, definitely need is this one, x equals x naught plus v naught times t plus one half a t squared. It will look a little different in each problem. So let's go through it. I'm going to do a in. So for a, I'm going to do it in blue. We have x, which is 0. Oops, I'm very sorry. We have x, which we're going to write as 100, is equal to x naught, which is 0 plus v naught, which is 4, times t, which we don't know, plus 1 half a t squared. So our a is 0. So we get to cross out this whole thing. All of it goes away. So now we just have, and I mean, this is also just 0, so again, we do not care. It goes away. So we have 100 equals 4t. To solve for t, divide by 4 on both sides. So if this 4 crosses out, 100 divided by 4, think of a one fourth of a dollar, gives you 25 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the next one. I'm going to do this in orange for pirate orange. All right, so our x is 80 meters, plugging in for this x, our x naught is still 0, plus our v naught, which is 0, times t, plus our 1 half a, our a is 2, times time squared. Alright, this problem, that's 0. 0 times t is still just 0. We don't care. And now we get to move on with our problem. We have 80 meters equals 1 half times 2 times t squared. 1 half of 2 is really just that simple. It is just 1 times t squared equals 80. So you can divide by the 1 if you want, but again, 80 divided by 1 will still just be 80 equals t squared. You have a square root here. The opposite of a square root, remember, if you have something squared, to undo it, you must square root it. So square root your t, and if you do it to one side, you must do it to the other. Square root your 80. If you do this, you're going to get t equals 80 or 8.9 seconds. 
So as far as who gets there first, well, if it took Pirate A 25 seconds and it took Pirate B 8.9 seconds, hopefully you can tell, aha, Pirate B got there first. As far as justifying your words, pictures, equations, this is all your equations. Your words would be Pirate B got there first because, how do we know she got there first? It took her less time to get there, therefore she's there first. All you really need to say is, well, it took her 8.9 seconds, so she was first. Perfectly acceptable answer. We are moving on to number four. Remember, if you need extra help on these, I will be, the morning before the test, I will be there at 7 o'clock in the morning. All right, four, read the question. On September 26, 1993, this actually happened. Dave Monday, a diesel mechanic by trade, went over the Canadian edge of the Niagara Falls. Yes, that's that huge, uh, you know, waterfall up in New York, up to New York, on the edge of Canada. For the second time, he decided to do it again, falling 48 meters to the water and rocks below. On this attempt, he rode in a steel chamber with an air hole. How fast did he hit the water? So this doesn't tell us a lot of information, but you got to really think about it. So let's draw a picture. So we have him going over this waterfall. It's obviously crazy. He's going over this waterfall. So he's going down. Uh, the height of said waterfall is 48 meters. Which means we can call the top here 48. We call the bottom here zero. I want to know how fast is he going at the end. So what's his velocity? He is falling though. So think about that. If he's falling, what do those mean? So let's start writing out some variables. So we have x not where he started. He started up at the top. So he's going to be start at 48 meters. We care how fast he is at the bottom, which is at zero. So he hits rock bottom essentially. Hopefully he doesn't hit too many rocks. Um, then we continue. We want to know what his final velocity is, right? Because it asks how fast. Velocity is the speed. But that's not a lot of information this problem gave us. So we got to think. He's falling. What do we know about falling and acceleration? If you are just falling, your acceleration is always due to gravity, which is at negative 10 meters per Per second squared. That will be written on the back black on the back whiteboard if you need it. Then we gotta think, well, okay, well how fast was he going when he started? We gotta know how fast he was going if we gotta figure out how fast he's going at the end. Well, think about this. If you fall if you are falling, you are jumping off this direction. So if you're the waterfall Sure, he's going this direction. That has nothing to do with how fast he's going this direction, which is the direction we care about. So if we just drop him off here and then he falls, what is his speed at this top part? Hopefully you can think, oh, well, he's not going down at all yet. He's, he hasn't even started going down. So your velocity will be zero because he hasn't even started. So looking at this, you could do one of two ways you could figure out how to solve for time and then go back and figure out how long it must have taken him or you can just use problem two which is v squared is equal to v naught squared plus two a with x minus x naught all right, so let's plug in. Remember, we don't know this one, so we cannot plug in for it. It is our question mark. So we don't know what v squared is, but we do know that v naught is zero, which means this term can just go away. Convenient. We know acceleration is due to gravity. Remember, it's negative because he's fallen down. So we have negative 10 meters per second squared. And we are multiplying it times our change of position. So it is the final position, which is 0 minus 48. Oh, wait, you say that's negative. Sure, true. This has a point, though. So we have 2 times a negative 10 gives you negative 20 meters per second squared. 
0 minus 48 is just negative 48 meters. Notice we have meters times each other, so you're going to get meter squared over second squared, because the second stays. You get negative 20 times 48, which if you put that into your calculator, it should give you a nice positive, because remember, double negative gives us a positive. 960 is equal to v squared. Square root it all. So you actually square root these, so you get rid of your squared, so it's just meters per second. And if you square root it, you're going to get something like 30.9. If you round to 31, that's perfectly fine. And depending, if you write 30.9 meters per second, absolutely, full credit. Technically, though, remember he is falling down. So he is going to be negative meters per second. If you had, this, if you had a positive number in class, I didn't correct you because... Really, you did everything right. Technically, it could be either negative or positive. Just think, which direction is it going? Oh, it's going down. So he must be going at a negative velocity. Hopefully, this video was helpful for you. Do, if you still have questions, come in in the morning. I will be here at 7. And good luck on your studying.